DLSS 3.0 is basically Nvidia agreeing with me and saying we don't need more responsiveness. We need to overcome sample and whole blurriness. And that's exactly what they're doing. It is not magic. It is going to have a higher latency. So here's the, the words of Brian Catanzaro. He is the NVIDIA Vice President of Applied Deep Learning Research. Here, here's what he said. And I'm reading this uh, WCCF uh, tech article and I'm gonna post the link in the description of the video. I'm gonna read what he said. The combination of NVIDIA Reflex and DLSS 3 provides much faster FPS at about the same system latency. That's the key at about the same system latency. We have a plasma TV that looks at 60 Hertz. It looks the same as 120 frames per second on this LG OLED in terms of motion. The difference is that by having 120 frames, real 120 frames, you get a better latency. So it looks about the same, but it feels a lot more responsive. So here's the catch. To get 120, you need a lot more computing power. And I'm not talking about resolution, of course, the Plasma TV is a 1080p screen, but just talking about a pure motion clarity and input response. So what Nvidia is doing is saying, okay, the input response if good enough, is good enough at 60 with this uh, reflex technology. And that, that's what I've been telling you on every single video about motion interpolation. Hey, this works very good. Sometimes it depends on the game, especially on the games that come with Nvidia Reflex. Like for example, uh, God of War, you see competitive games like Fortnite. Those games that have that Reflex and ultra low latency mode from Nvidia on the game, they feel so responsive that I've been using motion interpolation from this LG C1 and it's, it's just amazing <laughs> because you get the motion clarity. You do not get a better responsiveness. Actually, with this LG C1, you get less. But because you, you cannot use uh, game optimizer mode, you have to use a different mode that it has natively higher latency. So Nvidia, what they are doing is basically, we already have the latency, it's low enough, let's just double the frame rate and they are doing motion interpolation but here's the catch you need to understand what you're buying into because usually people associate the higher frame rate with the better responsiveness okay and most people that play competitive they play with a mouse and keyboard and they do this they do this, they play like this. They don't pan the camera slowly like I do because I play with a controller. I like to enjoy the motion clarity with, with the analog stick when you can pan the camera and you can see the motion clarity beautifully. But people that play like this, they're not going to see any, almost any difference because the higher, the higher frame rate, people are trying to get that higher frame rate to get this responsiveness so with this DLSS 3.0 you are not going to get this better okay <laughs> it's gonna look the same almost the same to you you're you're basically you're not gonna be very happy with that uh, I, you know I still you still need to try uh, I haven't seen it but based on the information we have I don't think that competitive gamers are gonna be very happy with that they are most likely not going to be able to notice the difference between DLSS 2.0 and getting half the frame rates in, in 3.0. But let's take a look at the NVIDIA uh, website here and see what, you know, what that DLSS 3.0 is doing. They are basically generating an entire frame. So we, and I'm gonna post this link also. We see here DLSS super resolution, traditional render frame, then a frame generated and then another real frame and then another frame generated. So they are doing the same motion interpolation that this LGC1 is doing, but just on asteroids <laughs> using AI and probably with a lot less artifacts. And also, is it can be a variable a frame rate because it doesn't matter. It's depending on what the GPU can do. So the time that it's going to take to show these two frames is gonna be the same time it's gonna take the same or a little bit more 
it should be a little bit more but this is probably gonna be so fast that it's gonna be about the same so the responsiveness you're going to get is half period you cannot you cannot get the responsiveness because they are generating entire frames so with DLSS 3.0 if you are getting 120 frames the responsiveness you're gonna be getting is 60 frames with uh, reflex at most that's the maximum possible responsiveness you're going to get but that is still awesome in my opinion because that is basically overcoming sample and whole blurriness that's exactly the example I was giving you with the plasma TV and the OLED at 60 frames an impulse display looks the same it looks the same as a sample and hold display at 120 so it doesn't feel the same that's why people love high frame rate for competitive gaming but this is still awesome and this is basically a confirmation bias for me <laughs> because I'm biased towards the image clarity motion clarity more than the responsiveness because I don't play with mouse and keyboard I like the vibration of the controller and I like the analog stick to pan the camera so this is basically a confirmation bias for me that is basically Nvidia agrees with me <laughs> they're saying basically we need we need to overcome the blurriness we need a higher frame rate we need more frames so we can see better what's going on and I still think that I'm going to like and I'm going to prefer the reflex uh, and this DLSS 3.0 for competitive gaming I don't I don't do competitive gaming but if I'm just gonna play one day Warzone or you know, Fortnite whatever I'm still going to prefer that because when I'm moving with my analog I can see better so if you pan if you pan the camera you're gonna be able to see better you're not going to get the, the, the benefits but you're gonna see better let's also let me also show you that on this article this same vice president he's talking about DLSS 3.0 games will still uh, so that no so let me see so he's basically saying that um, they are leaving the door open to Nvidia DLSS 3.0 to potentially becoming compatible with RTX 2000 and 3000 series so what that means is that it, it is gonna work that he's saying that it wouldn't yield the same benefits uh, basically it's gonna be slower but that makes sense I'm okay with that but yeah it, it should be figured out they should figure out a way to make it work uh, they probably know already but they're saying right now they're saying currently the current version only works on the 40 series car of course because they want to release it and sell it and that's a big selling point I mean that's the that's the reason I'm buying it <laughs> into it so it's definitely a huge selling point and that's exactly why they are not going to release it at the beginning but because Nvidia is still going to have the previous uh, 30 series car for the lower end they're not going to release the 4070 or 4060 because that's going to crush the current high-end cards in some scenarios with this motion interpolation is basically doubling the frame rate <laughs> no no wonder so they're not going to release uh, those so basically they will support a DLSS 3.0 because they still have to get rid of the, the 30 series they have for the lower end and just because I mean at some point it has to make sense but yeah this is just still amazing I'm still amazed with it but now I am like okay okay <laughs> it is not magic it is not magic uh, it is awesome it's a great idea it, it, that was my vision that's that's what I was waiting for so I'm buying into it for sure it's what I wanted it's, it's exactly in my opinion we, we need more motion clarity and input responsive awesome but if it looks blurry I don't care so this boost mode for example that this LG C1 has at 60 frames you lock the frame rate you enable boost mode and you get like 9 milliseconds like almost 120 like responsiveness at 60 frames but it looks blurry so I don't care about that I, have, I would never use that I much rather use uh, motion pro black frame insertion at 60 to overcome to overcome that sample and whole blurriness and if you play a reflex compatible game like a game that has that Nvidia low latency ultra low latency built into it 
it's gonna feel super responsive so of course you see some flickering that's something that could be easily fixed by LG just by supporting custom resolutions with different TWMs for the Motion Pro but yeah they didn't do it and they're not gonna do it because this is mainly a TV not a, not a gaming monitor so yeah it is looking pretty good but you need to understand the limitations and know what you're buying into it's not going to give you the full benefits that you are expecting with the higher frame rate you should get a better responsiveness and you're not going to you have to understand that especially if you for example if you have a monitor that is uh, let's say your monitor is capped to 95 Hertz for some reason you have a 1440p monitor I have a 1440p monitor that is capped to 95 Hertz if I use that monitor and then my GPU is giving me 180 frames for competitive gaming sometimes people use the monitors in that way because you cannot see the frames but because you turn off vSync you get a little bit of an improved uh, latency that's not gonna happen <laughs> because you're getting the latency of half of the frame rate basically I just wanted to make that clear but yeah it is still uh, awesome they're showing you all the games that are going to be compatible with that Black Myth Wukong included which is gonna be is one of my most anticipated games uh, awesome and from here yeah it's basically the only game I'm really waiting for Stalk, Stalker 2 is gonna be uh, also very good but I'm not a big fan of, of those kind of games but yeah it's looking good <laughs>